Welcome everybody back to Waterbox Live. If you haven't already, smash that like button, it helps us out a lot. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit those notifications. We have a we'll... super exciting episode we today. Do. We have Oh right here live with us to do a Q&A, so drop your questions into the comments. We'll be going through as many as possible. It's really an, an awesome that they have come all the way here to do this. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah. Let's get Let's started. Get started. All right, we're back. <laughs> he okay? lost his pen. <laughs> doing okay? Yeah. I'm not doing okay. Not doing okay. I'm get um, it. There's I'm our Instagram it. there. Definitely follow us for some behind the scene content that you won't see anywhere else. Yes. I just posted Instagram. a video of myself at the beach today. You did? I was actually quite surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks very odd. All this aquarium stuff, then also there's like me at the beach. But yeah. hey. But you're going to see cool stuff. It's not the official. Boy. So we have. We just recently finished up a build a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was all in one peninsula, 65.4, and it was a full aquaculture. So it was the fish, coral, everything is aquacultured from ORA. It was an awesome build. You guys have really have followed along with it. It's stunning. It's one of my favorite builds for sure. Yes, one that we've ever done. And it's going to live here permanently. We're going to watch it develop. But we talk, we're talking with Jordan and Donna at ORA, and they wanted to come up and actually answer all your questions here live, because every time we had one of those episodes, there were so many questions in the comments, we couldn't even keep up. Yeah. So you guys had tons of questions, so they're actually here. So we actually have Donna and Jordan here live. Come on up. Come on over, you guys. We are Again, so excited. I want to encourage you guys, take advantage of this. These guys drove all the way shorter. up here. Yeah. Don't worry about my I can step. see your real height. <laughs> Should um, we move that? You can move yeah. it. <laughs> Jordan got taller. So, definitely take advantage of these guys that are here. They drove all the way up from Fort Pierce. Ask away. Ask about ore. Ask about aquaculture. Ask, ask about the fish. Everything. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys. For no, hey, thank you guys for having us. It's been an absolutely wonderful opportunity. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. Excited to get to see the new studio. Got to see your tank in person. It's absolutely well, beautiful. All yeah, this stuff. It's turned out really, really nice. So definitely drop those questions into the comments. They're going to be working on grabbing those. We want to do a little overview of the all-in-one peninsula build that we did. We've got a video for you. So this is kind of showing up close some of the stuff that is in the aquarium. See a full shot there. Phil, it, I mean, it looks great already with everything still needing to grow in. I like the rock work you guys did. Nice choice for your peninsula style there, where you have a lot of open space, a lot of caves. Perfect fish like your uh, striped blennies right there. These are my favorite. There's been a ever since they were first known as a new like color variation of the clown. I've always wanted a black storm. The black you storm. You guys gave such a beautiful the pair. Black storm. And they are my little babies in there. Got some chalk bass. We got some lemon damsels. That color, bright yellow like that. I didn't even know those were a thing until they showed up. <laughs> yeah, these guys are great. We actually have very good luck with the uh, the lemon damsels. We make them in, in quite a few numbers, for sure. Yeah, and they've been getting along really nicely. The orchid dotty back is definitely a favorite, just because of the bright punch of color. Oh man, and he, yeah. kind of secretive. So you're like, oh, where is he? And then he just suddenly shows up, and you're like, there you go. And they just glows, absolutely yeah. beautifully. A fish very best shown in more of like a warmer spectrum for sure to really bring out that bright, bright magenta. Yeah, when we were at when we were at your facility, right under the sunlight, just under the sunlight, they were like it was like they were under a black light or something. Yep, yep. It was crazy. glow in the dark. So beautiful, yeah. beautiful ganies. Look something. at that little guy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, like three fish <laughs> stuck together. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so they, all the corals are super happy. I mean, they adjusted with no problem. Of course, they're aquacultured, so they're used to the captive care, um, and everything just is flourishing beautifully in this aquarium. Hey. You've got some zinnia. So I put the zinnia against the back wall. I want it to actually to grow. grow the whole back wall of zinnia. So we're going to see that happen kind of as, over time as it goes. I love that toadstool too. One of my it favorites. has really long polyps. Sure it's does. Beautiful. I'd moved it recently, and that one toadstool, his polyps have just expanded no, beautifully. Totally happy. Yes, he is completely happy in his spot, and it's just a beautiful And plant. a great alternative to an anemone uh, in home That's aquarium. True. A lot you of know. clownfish will use those and swim along the tentacles. Them. You don't have to worry about it moving around, getting sucked up into your power head. Uh, a great kind of low uh, demand animal for that. Yep, and that's actually yeah. a live view right here of the ORA Aquarium. 
You see all the fish are nice and active and happy. Their light doesn't go off until later, so they're happy. They probably want their dinner. <laughs> David wants to know where Gary is. Uh -huh. so oh. They're already saying, where's Gary? There he is. Oh, I actually, can see him. I actually see him in front of the Red Ghani, right? He's right there tucked he is. behind the oh, Mount Pomona. Yeah. There he is. Um, so he's trucking around in there somewhere. And you guys did a great job with the placement, too. As you can see, like the Acropores being up on top and the most light demanding. You've got a lot of your LPS a little bit lower. Uh, that's a nice, nice example there. I like yeah, it. so on the one arch towards the front, has actually got five different of the SPS from you guys, the stylos, um, and a mix there with the digis. And that one is right closest to the Nero, so it's going to have that mm -hmm. better flow. So I'm kind of doing like a little SPS grow out spot there because there's not much below it. So it's going to let it fill in for the nice colonies. Yeah, and you'll have some nice contrast there with the uh, the bright green frog skin. Um, it's going to go straight up, get some nice tall branches, get some nice good vertical growth, whereas your stylophore is on both sides going to be more rounded. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a nice contrast for sure. It's amazing. It's just, I mean, I love part I love about this build is that you can show that you don't have to take anything from the ocean. Right. And you can have a completely diverse beautiful reef tank. Including yeah. the live rock and sand, which I think is fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So from base, you know, all the way to the end, you can have all different types of coral, soft, LPS, SPS, fish, and nothing has come from the wild, which right. is so important to us because we always are advocating for the best way to do it for the environment, for the hobby, sure. all of that. And you can see, you can get a whole color spectrum, you can get all the shapes, you can get all the types of fish, yep. uh, and nothing caught with a net. It's great. Yeah, perfect. Love it. Do we have, I think, are we pulling questions? Keenan, you ready for questions? Um, <laughs> that's a no. <laughs> well, I will read them out to you. Okay. Because well, we did change computers, so the extension to throw them on screen isn't there. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. so okay. Give me a minute and I will get it up. Okay. We're ready. Well, how about, well, how long do you need? We can talk for a little bit longer until you have that. Right, okay. So we also are giving away a shirt. Yes. Today, um, and then also one of the uh, limited edition water box tumblers. Yeah. So we will be pulling from those that are active in the comments, asking questions. So we'll have two winners today on those items. Yeah. And we do have those available for sale on the website. <laughs> it's a funny story is people have been asking for these mugs for a long time. We always use them here on the show. Yep. So we're like, fine. You know, we finally eventually put them up, and they're wildly popular. There's not a lot left. We're not going to print them again. Um, so go pick them up. We are giving one away today. Yep, so, so awesome. one winner of those. There are our happy hour mugs. Uh, sure. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time we've actually sold, like, released these ones to not They're usually, s yeah, staff only yes. mugs. Perfect. So we're doing those giveaways. Um, and you guys actually just sent up a couple more corals for we this did. aquarium. So, because we're going to be gonna be adding a few more here and there as it matures. We'd love to see it grow. So the interstellar... Stylo? Stellar Stylo. Uh, Stellar Stylo. Stylo. The <laughs> Peach Digitata. Yes. And then the Green Stylo, right? I believe so. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, so you guys just sent those up. We got those added into the tank. Peach is really nice. Uh, gets a nice bright orange color. Stella style for you get nice icy blue polyps over a nice pink skeleton. That one is my favorite. It is. As Under soon as it started opening up, I'm like, whoa, there's about six different colors sure. you'll find yeah. in all the different polyp tips in the base. Um, it's like almost got this rainbow sheer. Do the full actinic. You'll see some nice pop of color, like a bunch of stars. It'll be great. Very cool. So we yeah. added those into the tank uh, yesterday. And those have already opened up, happy, and all of that. Um, and I did notice you've got one of our upcoming corals in there as well. Yes, mm -hmm. so the Pectinia. Pectinia, yep. right. When is that available? We had talked about when we put it in and it was coming soon. Very soon, very yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah. So we've got our farm working diligently on making as many of those as possible. It's going to be a really popular coral. People love the different shapes, the different colors. Mm -hmm. It's going to be nice. And that particular one actually comes from our mariculture facility okay. um, as opposed to our greenhouse um, in Fort Pierce. but. We're working on another variant of that in oh. our greenhouse. So you may actually find it uh, in the future, two different varieties, all from ORA. You love nice. it. Ooh, nice. Special information just here. I do want to encourage <laughs> you guys to post your questions below. The guys back here will be filtering through them. Um, so definitely, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, post them in. So we don't have an exact date on the Bactinia, but keep an eye out. TBD. Ask your dealer to get on that list. TBD like, ASAP. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of code. <laughs> okay. Jot it down. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, I love pectinias. Like if you, and it's hard to tell from a frag to kind of see how cool they do oh, grow right. out. 
but it's like this big thing. It's got all these little branches sticking it's out. Very it's very alien looking for sure. Very, yeah. very cool to see. Um, so I think we have one of the best first pieces out there to show people. Right. Yeah. Can't wait to show it off some more. Yes, absolutely. Oh, we got questions. What, what are you? All right, so Peter, a what? No, Peter A. <laughs> <laughs> Peter A what? <laughs> Peter A says, what new fish species is ORA working on breeding? Mm, always a good popular that. question. <laughs> well, I mean, we can always say we're working on a number of different ones, right? Um, we've got some new damsel species coming out. Uh, always working on expanding our angelfish selection. Um, and we are actually working very diligently on a number of different uh, designer clownfish combinations. Oh, so there should be some cool stuff coming up towards the end of this year. Uh, for sure next year. Oh man, new designer clowns. Mm -hmm. It seems like there could be already too many, but man, wait till you see <laughs> what's, I don't think what's you coming can. up. I don't Millions think there's too many because like the different variety of the patterns and Absolutely. the color and stuff like Even that. Even with like, the different species, for sure. Yes, that's awesome. There's a lot of room to grow there. I see lots of good questions coming up. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on them. Oh. Oh. Nope, maybe. Mm. There you go. <laughs> ah, there we go. Shane, oh, the question of the, the century. Do you guys offer public tours? I don't know. Do you build aquariums? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, we're not really set up for tours. I mean, we're on a closed uh, university campus. Um, we've got a lot of biosecurity. Uh, it's something we would definitely love to, to work towards, and hopefully we'll get there soon. But right now, we're just not set up for that kind of engagement. Yeah, the next best thing is we did give you guys a full tour. Yes. We oh, came very down, extensive, we, I loved we, having you. We uh, toured the whole facility. We have like a 23 minute video that's posted. So definitely Shane, go check that out um, as well. I can understand because like when we we're there, you can understand like the, <clears throat> The process of the breeding and raising of these fish, like you have to be very contained. Right. You know, you can't have a lot of external factors possibly happening because it can mess with the whole process. Sure. Yeah. So for you guys to be able to produce all these wonderful things, it has to be very controlled. And I don't remember if, if you guys showed it on the video, but I mean, every time we walked into another building, we yeah. had to walk through a foot bath. We had to spray down our hands yes. and wash them with uh, alcohol and soap. Um, even our employees, if they, they aren't allowed really to go in between multiple buildings, uh, and really, it would just take somebody dropping a handful of pennies in our coral greenhouse, you know, for potential Everything. disaster, yes. right? So we just have, unfortunately, a lot of things to kind of work out before we can have guests, and we would love to have you as soon as possible. All right. Jessica says, what biosecurity measures are taken oh. at ORA? Do, do ORA fish need to be quarantined? I was just going to so say, it kind of just rolls right yeah. into it. <laughs> biosecurity is one of my favorite new words. I, it's, it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll send you a foot bath. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have, to, we'll have to require that when people come into the <laughs> studio. Back here? Oh my God. <laughs> so I guess uh, to answer this question, um, I believe Jordan kind of touched uh, a bit on it as far as, you know, how we handle biosecurity in our facility. You know, we go through strict protocols where we do kind of sanitize as we enter and exit buildings um, and we go between systems. We also don't cross contaminate as far as from building to building. Um, but as far as, you know, ORA fish needing to be quarantined, uh, we 100% believe in quarantining everything, regardless of where it comes mm -hmm. from. Our fish don't get exposed to any sort of outside wild um, parameters. However, you know, quarantining is such a vital process to the success of your aquarium. A good habit to get into, Yeah, for sure. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, a good practice no matter where you're getting your stuff from. I mean, if from. nothing else, you don't necessarily have to use uh, a lot of medications, but just having uh, a chance to put your new fish somewhere where they won't be harassed by your existing fish, you can just sit and observe them, uh, you'll find it goes a long way when you get ready to introduce them into your main display. Sure, see how they're eating, what they right. prefer, all of that, like it's a good practice no matter what. Yeah, exactly. fish is stressful, I mean it's hard on them. Yeah, yeah, they don't enjoy being bagged and then moved Ships, to yeah. new <laughs> friends and new places. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Shane says, what is or a coral dipping recommendation? So, I mean, a number of our corals uh, do just fine with dipping. Um, some corals don't really like it, though. We find people struggle with uh, the Hawkins, um, pearlberry, um, or raspberry, any kind of our more smooth skin aquaport pieces mm -hmm. don't do too well on the dipping. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Did not know that. I did not know that either. Yeah, and yeah. we don't mind. Very sensitive means, to it. Uh, dip all the corals. Again, it's, it goes back to the quarantine, you know, regardless of source. 
It always is beneficial. Your, your first priority should always be to take care of your own home aquarium. So make sure wherever you get your corals, you're taking care of them before they go in your display. Um, again, just one of those good habits to get into. So is there a reason that we think that the smooth skin ones tend to not do with dipping as well? <clears throat> I mean, I don't know an exact reasoning behind that aside from, I mean, their exterior kind of tissue is, is so thinner. More delicate, you know. yeah. I wonder if that goes towards like, in general, all smooth skin type of like SPS tends to be more sensitive. I mean, I just, I've got just kind of <clears throat> anecdotal personal experience yeah. with that, that kind of I wonder. Me, so. It'd be interesting to hear if that's like something kind of across the board, but those thinner ones tend to have a harder sure. time dipping. That's good to know. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> Kyle says, how did ORA get started with commercial aquaculture and coral propagation? It's a good, good question. question on your 25th anniversary. Oh, that is yeah. a good question. 25 uh, you know, years. Go I, down, I go. think you should answer <laughs> ah. I mean, I know like the generalized, like how we acquired most of our corals, uh, mm. kind of, you know, how we started setting up. But as far as commercial aquaculture and that kind of program that we implemented, um, you know, that is probably better suited for you. Uh, well, I mean, just a quick rundown. I mean, I think that was our goal kind of from the beginning is just to be able to produce a marine animal in commercial quantities, right? So starting with the clownfish, how can we get this animal that's, you know, wildly collected uh, in large numbers from the ocean um, in a more sustainable land-based form? So uh, I think from the beginning, we started with all the different types of clownfishes we could get our hands on. Uh, it's very similar with corals. I mean, we took corals, not necessarily from wild colonies, but from hobbies just like you. We went to public aquariums. Um, anytime we went to overseas in Europe, I know we brought back coral frags from some of the aquarists there. Mm -hmm. um, even some of our fellow employees have donated coral pieces that are now in entirely commercial production right now. That's awesome. Thanks. Wow. <clears throat> Bots28 says, I bought a pair of Ori Black Storms as babies, but they are not pairing. It's been about two months. Any tips? Is it still possible for them to pair? Interesting. Donna? Uh, I would say yes, it is still possible for them to pair. Um, but after two months, it is also possible that they will not find each other um, a suitable <laughs> match. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've gone through this in my home aquarium before where I have introduced fish of the same size, same mm -hmm. species, um, hoping that they would pair. And eventually, the female decides she is not in any shape or form ready for that male. <laughs> um, and it just didn't work out. So there is okay. that op there is that possibility. Um, but I mean, two months is a very short time period as well. Um, we have some pairs together for, I mean, decades, you know. Um, and it's not, not doing anything. It's, it's not also unusual for both fish, regardless of their size, to basically decide that they both want to be females yep. uh, uh. spontaneously. I mean, you can have pairs that break apart um, just kind of on a whim. We had a, a pair uh. of maroons just this morning yep. uh, that we were going to sell to somebody, and was it the male was beating up the female? The you know, male they, decided uh, he did not want the female. <laughs> they, they had been together quite some time, yep. and I guess they just decided now was the time to see other people. Well, <laughs> so it's not always a guarantee that you just put two juveniles together that it's going to be like a happy... It's, it's you know. more likely, okay. but at the end of the day, yeah. we're not in control of their biology or their temperament, and they may just decide they've got their own whims and wishes. They do okay. what they want. That's right. Very cool. <laughs> Good to know. Keep us updated on that, though, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. Joseph says, does ORA breed powder blue tangs? Dang. <laughs> That's tough one. Do we? Don't we? We get the <laughs> question about just tangs in general all the time. So we are working with tangs. Uh, we do have them in harems, in large troughs. Um, you guys saw that when you walked mm. our facility. Um, but we do not have anything in active production right now. And it's, it's going to be some time before you see ORA releasing tangs. That's a tough one. Tangs are tough. Right, yeah. it's one of those things that's still a very big learning curve it is. on a lot of them. Sure, tangs are tough, uh, and really it is actually at times a challenge just keeping the bread and butter animals uh, yeah. available in large numbers. I mean, yeah. it's, this last year in particular taught us that 
you know, there is room for people to have an aquarium in every home. And when you have that kind of demand, uh, you, you know, can't make them breed faster. You can't, yeah. right. And so, yeah, we, we spend a lot of resources just on our bread and butter stuff, um, right. just keeping mm -hmm. those available at all times for everybody. You yeah. have to have a large space for tangs to feel probably comfortable enough to even breed. Oh, sure, like they're, absolutely. They're very active fish yeah, in the ocean. Big they're going fish, yeah. huge And have you ever yeah. seen a full grown powder blue? I mean, they are an enormous yeah. fish swimming by. And they're swimming miles a day everywhere. Doing Stunningly beautiful, though. I know. Powder yeah. blues are one of my favorites. Yes, Joseph. Absolutely. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Shane says, Have you ever have you been seeing some blue on designer clowns? Is blue is a blue clown a possibility? Hmm. Do it. <laughs> what? Do it. Uh -huh. Do what? Whoa, whoa, wow. <laughs> Talk about something that's happening. The brown clown? The brown. Something's oh. happening. Oh well, okay. So, <laughs> will there ever be a will there ever be a blue <laughs> clownfish? Uh, no. I mean, are we talking like this kind of blue? Uh, probably not. However, a blue clown. Yeah. A blue clown. That'd be amazing. <laughs> but we do have lots of clownfish that will showcase blue, right? One of our most recent releases is the Barrier Reef clown. So this, on the surface, is like a brown Clarkie. However. When they get older, those white stripes will turn blue like that, and that is—it yeah. is. It is. It's a beautiful fish, uh, underappreciated, not a lot of people see it, um, but look for it. Or a barrier reef clown. So now, you have to wait for it. No, no it's, it's, it's really it's, no, no, it's no, out blue. there. Oh, you have to yes. wait for. Very similar to like a gold nugget maroon, right? Like a fish that starts yeah. out white, even a gold striped maroon starts out white, develops the gold, matures yeah. into a beautiful flower. I mean, it's it's really <laughs> nice. The transformation, right? Uh, but I think going to what your question is. So your snowflake clowns uh, actually have a layer of black underneath that blue, or sorry, underneath white. that white, and as it shows through those kind of whitish scales, it does turn blue, giving it a really nice icy appearance that I think yes. is very desirable. Yeah, so a lot of times the white of the clowns look blue in certain angles and times. Can you Google this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you'll see it in like a black ice, <laughs> yeah. our snowflakes, frostbites, mm -hmm. so all the, fish. the brown that, clown, what is his name again? Oh. The barrier reef? The barrier reef, reef clown, clown is one of the newest okay. ones. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know, probably a general range. I would say, you know, maturity, anytime you see a fish that's probably three inches or so, you're for sure going to start seeing that blue really show up. Okay. Uh, the snowflakes, we've seen it very young, even yeah. in fish as small as an inch and a half. Wow. I want to see the barrier reef clown. I think I'm just going to sit, like, partially off camera the whole time. I <laughs> know. <laughs> it's huge. Um, <laughs> yeah, I should definitely check that out to see. Do you have pictures of the adult ones with all that blue on the website? Not on our website yet. Okay. We do have one in our coral greenhouse. Oh, yeah. Again, one of those so, fish that in sunlight looks spectacular. And absolutely. I mean, as blue as, like, the lighting on the tank right now, okay. it just, it, this beautiful band of, like, an ice blue shimmered stripe. We'll, we'll get down to post them. I will get a video of it. Get some we'll pictures tag you of guys. that. So we can we'll show them yep. what we're talking about because that sounds really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Jessica says, are OA, ORA damselfish bred for docile temperament? Am I taking it? Go for it. <laughs> Jump on that. <laughs> All right. So we actually are very picky when it comes to our damsel production. For the most part, we do want to produce uh, damsels that are more readily docile in a system. Uh, not going to kind of go after all of your other tank mates. Uh, so all of the damsels that we produce generally have a moderate temperament um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just to accommodate them. Somewhat more mellow for yeah. a damsel. Right. Yeah. They're not known for the nicest of fish, but I feel like a lot of times captive bred, you can kind of fine tune that a little bit or go for the species that are not I think that's more exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Choose a species rather <clears throat> than like breed something into them that... I don't know how you could even breathe yeah. into yeah. personality. Can you make a nice damsel? <laughs> yeah. You speak you softly to smile. Them. I mean, because you're doing great day. today. At the no, end I'm of really the day, proud of you. <laughs> your clownfish are a damsel species, mean. too. And mm -hmm. I mean, there are some mean clownfish out there. Yes. If you've ever been bit by a cinnamon clown, you know, you'll know. You know, I had one once when I was five <laughs> years old, never recovered. <laughs> no, man, clowns can get aggressive. Sure. They will rip skin, they will do whatever. Whatever. Yeah. So. Start a job, start a business, <laughs> can't stop them. <laughs> Unstoppable. All right. Awesome. Jeremy says, can you order corals and fish directly from ORI? 
We have this question that, a lot during keep, the show. That keeps coming up. Yeah, it's, it is. Very, it's a good question. We get asked all question. the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it, it, it's indicative of people having a hard time maybe finding them locally. Yeah. Uh, Don and I are very accessible. So just send us an email, send us a phone call. We are happy to connect you with some of our ORA partners uh, to get exactly what you want into your home aquarium through them. And that's no matter where you are, domestic, international. I mean, we can partner you uh, all around the globe. So. so you have a lot of dealers, you know, U.S. and all that, but local fish stores they can go to that can get ORA. And then also, if they're looking for online, Live Aquaria. Sure, we've a got a number well. of online vendors as well. Um, but yeah, we're here to help you. We don't sell direct to hobbyists, unfortunately. We really are supportive of the brick and mortar, um, you know, traditional store model of, of a fish store because ultimately that's where everyone starts into this hobby. Yeah. You know, yeah. walking into a fish store, seeing an aquarium, and, and imagining that in your own home. Right. That's very true. Awesome. Jacob says, how many generations of fish or coral do you guys process be before seeing fit to sell to the public? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that uh, question goes to... You can talk about fish, I'll talk about coral. How about that? All right. Well, so for <laughs> coral... <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I, I mean, will talk about the corals. Okay, talk about corals. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll talk about the fish, too. All right, well, oh, at, least for, <laughs> at least for the, the coral side of it, you know, it honestly is, I, I wouldn't say it's a generational thing so much just as just inventory. making sure we have enough to release on a commercial scale, making sure that the timeline fits for a commercial scale. Um, you know, I think we've previously discussed that it takes generally five years uh, to get a coral into full commercial um, scale. Starting from um, one frag, right. Starting from one frag, growing it out, and you know, as you guys may have seen in some of the previous water box videos, uh, it is fragging of frags. We don't have giant mother colonies that we frag down and sell off. It's frags on frags on frags <laughs> on frags. <laughs> You got it. You said it three times. That's All right. Again. Oh. Take it away with the fish. All right. So as far as, as, far as fish go, uh, again, not really a generational thing. It's uh, a number of things. So if we're going for a certain type of pattern, we may breed and breed and breed and continue to look at the offspring until we, we find a pattern that we like. Um, if it's a new fish or wild type fish, it may be maybe two generations down just so we can get the first generation of uh, fish that come out. We'll save as brood stock and hold all those back, raise those, and then that way we'll have quite an inventory uh, for hobbyists everywhere to have. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a certain pattern, it could probably take a long time to get sure. enough of that pattern. Because like we had talked about, I think, in previous ones, is like you take two or one that has a black storm pattern and a regular one. Sure. When they breed, like what percentage really comes out as that black storm pattern? Yeah. Very could, small. Very yeah. small. So then you take that small amount, like keep going. Like it can take a long time for those those designer ones that are very hard and I, to I like, wish I knew off the top of my pattern. head, but like a naked clownfish, for example, like I, I don't know how many generations it took to really produce a fish that used to have three stripes and now has zero. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure it was a lot. That's true. How do you take away stripes? How Just many generations to remove stripes? Gradually, absolutely. <laughs> One stripe at a time. Yeah. One stripe at a time. Lonnie says, is ORA working on any gobies? You guys have gobies. We, we do. do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the different all. types? So, <laughs> what did you uh, pressure. <laughs> so it's readily available. We generally have our yellow line gobies, our shark nose gobies, and our neon gobies. Uh, we also have watchman gobies, mm -hmm. so nice sand sifters. Um, what do those neon gobies do? They are cleaner. Ah, interesting. What do they clean? Uh, so somebody had mentioned, you know, possible tangs. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, there you go. Tangs you go. love to be cleaned, or not so much, but um, the Sometimes actual- Sometimes they'll clean by force. Yeah, yeah. The, the gobies <laughs> will signal the fish. Uh, it's one of their behavioral traits, and they will signal the fish, and the fish will signal back like, hey man, yeah. Uh, I'm ready. Come on, Jess, <laughs> clean up. I know, yeah. and they go on their side, um, and they're like, let's go. But the neon gobies are a great alternative to cleaner wrasses, which get pulled from the ocean a right. lot, have a- yep bad or poor survival rate and a very in important captivity. role in the ocean right and a very important role so like the neon gobies i've seen them they'll jump on the fish they'll clean skin mm -hmm. the scales parasites they'll go in mouth do their job yep. and you're not taking them from that important population in the ocean because right. cleaner wrasses they come in in such great numbers out of the wild and it's sad every time because i don't know 90 percent dismal really 90 percent probably die in aquariums yeah so this is a great alternative to still keeping your 
fish healthy mm -hmm. and promoting the aquaculture side. And, and with color too. And they're beautiful. And they're so cute. And another thing is like they are great for large aquariums and larger numbers and sure. they're great in nano tanks, you know, yeah. that you don't need tons of fish, but you're looking for that cleaner variety. Yep. They're awesome. One more question, I'm gonna show the tank live so we okay. can get a close Let's do up it. of it. Ooh. Amald says, what does ORA stand for? Just how about you tell us? Ocean Reefs Aquarium. Boom! Whoa. She's got it. <laughs> it's absolutely true. I didn't know I was answering questions today. <laughs> you make yes. waves. Ocean Reefs Aquariums. Um, there you go. Like, who came up with the name? Where did the name come from? You know, I think at one point in time there was like this thought that perhaps we would work on aquariums, and I just don't think it ever materialized okay. you know, 25 years ago. The name uh, is still there. But it, <laughs> it lingers, so it would be kind of weird if it was just OR. So I think we just <laughs> kept it. And, These yeah. are our OR fish. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> oceans, reefs, and aquariums. Yeah. All right, awesome. It so works. we're going to check out the tank. You doing some close-ups? Right. <laughs> if you guys haven't already, make sure you gently graze the like button. Um, helps us out a lot. So. All right, there is the aquarium that we've been talking about. What a beautiful aquarium! I know. I love the Ghanis. Like so flowy. They're a great option to add a lot of movement to your aquarium as well. And the red Ghani is super bright whenever you see it in person. Well, right there in front and center is that green little potato chip looking coral. A lot of people want to know what that is when we have it at trade shows. That is our mint pavona, and it is mm -hmm. like a living handful of potato chips. It is. If you look back at the videos, we did show a huge colony of it in oh, you guys' yeah. Yeah, farm yeah. systems, and the layers on it are so mm -hmm. intricate. And then if you actually look up really, really close, it's got all these fine lines. Mm -hmm. It's a very detailed type of coral. Going yeah, to, oh, there, okay, you there you go. You can go. see some of them. Um, it's just so unique as it grows out. It's really cool, and it's got that bright color. Which Remarkably is tough, too. Yes, good grower. There's the pe peach digi peach, that we just yeah. recently got in from you guys this week. Digitatas are one of those favorite beginner corals. I mean, really, yeah. you can put them almost in any reef tank. They're going to flourish. They're going to grow fast. Uh, low light, high light, they love it all. It's one of my favorite uh, stony corals. I love all the easy stuff. Yeah, it, yeah. the easier yeah. the better. Absolutely. Yeah. There's another Ghani there, nice green one. Wild Ghani pores tend to be, you know, have a rough, rough time in aquariums, but our mariculture ones tend to do very well. The red one up on top is bulletproof. I mean, that is one of our toughest corals mm -hmm. uh, and most beautiful. That's impressive for a Ghani too. Got some Duncans up front. Um, I love Duncans, they're fun to feed because they love yes. to eat. So they're gonna pop off tons of babies or grow into a really nice colony. Um, and I just like their like whiskery kind of appearance to them. Fun fact, our Duncans are the same ones from uh, Julian Sprung's books. Really? Right, right on the cover. That's one of our corals right wow. there. It's aged. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the interstellar styler right there. Or the stellar styler? Stellar, stellar styler. styler. I keep saying interstellar. I don't know why. Such a good movie. Remax. <laughs> <laughs> So you, hard to kind of grasp, it has tons of different colors in there. Yeah, it's hard to catch it in the camera, too. And so this coral right there, yep, that's a good one. This is the only acro they have in the tank, right? Uh, yes, so everything you sent was bird nests, sure. stylo, digis, um, and digis in Porites, there. So monoporas. Yeah. What is the species of that said. frog skin? Do you know? Uh, oh, the one, the frog skin acropora? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is a tough one. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's coming to mind is Aculus, but I don't know if that's true. My Latin's a little rusky, uh, and really, over time... I almost want to say, like, Ostera. Ostera, sure. We, Could be I think our yellow tip green stag is an Ostera. Uh -huh. It gets that nice, uh, you know, green to yellow with the bright blue polyps on the top, which you see in a lot of the Osteras. Well, that's pretty cool. There's cool mushrooms, some zoos. So I got all the soft corals along the bottom to fill in nicely. That... That one right there. What was that? What was that? The game? The Galax? The Galaxia? The Galaxia? Oh, Galaxia. Yeah. That's, That's the brightest Galaxia I've ever seen. Very bright. Can you go back to that one, Keenan? Uh, bright the green. The Keenan. bright green and one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. No, to the right. To the right. Over. Over. over that one. <clears throat> I just yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. interrupt your smooth camera movements. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, as beautiful as this coral is, it is one that chooses violence on a it, daily basis. It does. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's the, punch, the yeah. brightest one I've ever seen, though, like Jess said. It's, it's, so it's good that you vibrant. put it kind of... I see, some, he's on his own rock. A little he's bit of a, a distance. He's away from everybody. 
um, Galaxia, like they've got like seven, eight inch long. Oh, look at him, he's even got a little, yeah. a little taster out there. He's yeah. looking for somebody to sting. So yeah, if they're near <laughs> anything, they will go far distance to sting them like crazy and put tons of wolf down. They're a beautiful coral, mm -hmm. but you gotta keep them separate. Keep a little bit of a gap, yep. yep. You see, he's got his own space, he's good. <laughs> All right, you can go back to your smooth transitions, Keenan. I don't know. Yeah. You're the talking. I'm trying. Hang on, go back right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is the leather I was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, which one exactly is this one? This is our toadstool. So this is the one we grow uh, right here in Fort Pierce. Okay. Um, I love it. It's got a nice kind of green base to it. The tentacles, I've seen those even get even longer. Wow. Um, it just adds just a very elegant kind of hypnotic motion to mm -hmm. any aquarium. It's yeah, awesome. so before I moved it to this spot, I always put it polyps out a little bit. You know, it was happy, but it was never this long. Moved it to this spot, and it's just like, I think it's by day the tentacles are getting longer. Did and you? it's just absolutely just flows back and forth, so nice. Like it's a we, yeah. we get a lot of uh, questions about that coral, particularly when it doesn't expend its polyps and people are calling a panic like oh is it dead and then it'll like slough off this skin yes. and people are even more concerned but really it's a kind of a natural process it goes through uh kind of reborns itself mm -hmm. well, one of the things leathers actually need a lot of flow in comparison to what people think if they're in low flow they won't be able to slough that layer off and Certainly they'll get helps. bound up mm -hmm. almost and kind of like shiny looking you have to make sure they can be able to get that layer off so they can put their polyps out i was going to ask like if you said that you had recently moved it mm -hmm. into this spot. Was it in an area of lower flow prior to you moving it, it to this spot? It was, and then mm -hmm. I moved it here. I put it in the Nero. It's kind of like right in that wave motion of mm -hmm. the Nero, and it's as happy as can be. You see, he's gotten huge. Like he's, yeah, and it's, yeah. it's moving. It's moving. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I would point out is, uh, looks like you've got one of our purple Gorgonians. Mm -hmm. uh, Gorgonians are a fantastic coral. Uh, there are a lot that require heavy feeding in order to survive. Uh, the varieties that we grow are completely photosynthetic, so you don't need to add any kind of supplemental feeding for them. Nice. Just a nice average light, some good water motion, and they'll be just fine for you. Yeah, so put them right there, kind of where you can kind of grow out, not super heavy light, um, but it'll be good flow whenever we put coral food in there, it kind of goes right mm -hmm. to them. So you can kind of fill in that cave-ish type area. There's oh, our yeah. Monty right, right there. There he is. He's Another one of my favorites. Some, already getting a nice little growth ring on him, so we've seen him starting to get a little bit bigger. Another fantastic coral with actinic lighting. You're really going to see those nice yellow bulbs glow on that. The tank has turned out beautiful, guys. Yeah, we really appreciate even the opportunity to, to kind of get our livestock in front of you and your uh, viewers, because this you've done a remarkable job with it. You guys provided the remarkable things, so it's kind of easy from there. Um, I got a question for you, Jordan. Okay. Uh -oh. Do you guys foresee yourself adding, like expanding into like another, like more greenhouses? You have the main greenhouse. Is oh, there, sure. I mean, yeah. even just the space next to our greenhouse, we've got the slab of concrete ready to go. Okay. Um, it is remarkable how expensive greenhouses are. Um, <laughs> and Especially actually, right now, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, uh, we struggle even just getting people out to our facility. Uh, to help us build or, or rebuild stuff. So a lot of those projects are kind of like slow to develop, but we're absolutely hoping to, to expand to more greenhouses. Cool. cool. Aura is growing. This Always. is actually the second iteration of our greenhouse. We used to have another one on a complete other side of the campus. Oh, really? oh okay. Yeah. Smaller. Much smaller, yeah. much smaller. Wow. So we, yeah. The demand is there, so you gotta just find a way to keep up with absolutely. the demand and grow everything. And I mean, you figure like you're growing everything, you're adding new things, you're trying to expand, like sure. it's a lot going on at one time. So, and that's one of our most limiting factors in that building is just space, you know? And yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of the talk we've had is, if we do build another greenhouse, what would we put in it? We could probably just have a strictly soft coral greenhouse yep. and, and yeah. still not be able to keep up with what people need. Wow. That's, awesome. that's good though. I'm glad that so many people are going towards aquaculture. Absolutely, now more you know, than ever, for sure. That's very important. It's good to see because you know, as this, you know, the hobby grows and over time, you're gonna see, I don't know, a lot of the ocean export not even gonna be a thing. Yeah. So yeah. having so much aquaculture available is very beneficial. Every every aquarium that you guys put out there is one more new, you know, steward for the environment. You know, somebody who looks at their tank and wants to take care of the ocean after that. So it's it's yeah, it's fantastic. Goes that's hand in awesome. hand for sure. Love it. Nice. Got more? 
one more question. Do we have some winners for the shirt? Oh, oh sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. You so doing shirt and towels? Shirt and a cup. All right, get your horn ready. Shirt and a cup. <laughs> 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 Just wait for it. Okay. 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 All right. Are we ready? Oh. <laughs> he said it. Get the hand party I cannot believe this on. table is not covered in orange clownfish, Jordan. Oh, what a oh, missed opportunity. It's true. <laughs> we have a couple of rounds here, but... You, you've squeezed them all, haven't you? <laughs> Stress. They're just in no. shambles. <laughs> They're just in shambles. <laughs> yeah, we got to do that again. You need to put clownfish. Everybody. You let us know who wins the t-shirt. I'll send some yeah. of them as well. Oh, the t-shirt winner gets some nice squeezy clownfish. We've been go. getting a lot of messages on those, so yeah, uh, we'd love to be able to They're adorable. get them out there. They're actually I very did see nice. someone said you guys have ORA merchandise. We, we do. do. You have a, do you have like an apparel store on your website? Or no? Go ahead, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, have a, we have a shop, absolutely. You can get shirts, you can get posters. Uh, Your posters mouthpads. are awesome. They are. They're great. We've got yeah. some refills coming. A lot of stuff is a little limited right now, but uh, expect more in the next couple of days. Cool. Nice. So you got yeah. We got a little bit of everything in there, but posters have different types. Some of swag. Fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've got shirts and all that. Definitely check it out. So. Everybody loves merch or apparel yes. or swag or whatever you want to call it. It's always <laughs> nice to see like you know what our, a lot of our aquarists will do is they'll they'll buy some of our posters. They'll put them behind their aquarium or in their fish room, and it looks great. And I, we really appreciate it. Yeah. Get the word out there for ORA. We might not. Yeah, internet hiccup. Nope. So okay. It's connected, but I can give you the names of the winners. Let's hear it. We can do that. For YouTube, it'll be Reefer Guy TY. All right, YouTube is Reefer Guy TY for Listen, what? Sure. For shirts? Sure? T-shirts. T-shirts. Oh, okay. Clowns. Clowns. Spongy clowns. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Perfect. All right. Um, and then for the cup. It is Gabriel McElvey in mm. Facebook. All right, for the water box mug is Gabriel McAvee. McAvee. Congratulations. Congratulations, Gabriel. Awesome oh, Tumblr. Pretty, Reach pretty out expensive. to winners at waterboxaquariums.com and they'll get you all set up with your goodies. And then you'll get some cute little clownfish sent your way from yep. ORA while you're wearing your water box shirt. It's a win win. It you is. You can't lose. It is. So. We appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, oh, we hey, appreciate so the invite. Us, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of updates going on with the all-in-one ORA. Um, we're going to show you as things grow in, as the fish get bigger. Um, we're going to get new some new yeah. goodies yeah. here and there for it. So we'll definitely make sure that we do a lot of updates. Follow our social media, subscribe, all of that, so you always know what we're doing. Yep. And it's always great to have you guys. Pleasure. <laughs> yes. Love the road trip. Yeah. I don't Thank know if Keenan's wearing on something. We good? I'm good. I'm <laughs> 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 Thank you guys so much for watching today. We appreciate these guys for coming down. This build has been amazing. It's not the end of it, by the way. Um, so we'll be, me and Jess will be back here live tomorrow. If you do have more questions for ORA, put them in the comments mm -hmm. uh, below. I know that the live feed thing will cut out because mm -hmm. we didn't get to if we would have been going for three hours. Oh, yeah, would have been all day so Q &A. if you didn't get your question answered, put it in the comments below. These guys will check it out. Um, and again, thank you. And we're here tomorrow with the yep. Refill X build. Um, we have some new stuff going into there. And then check us out next Wednesday as we're going to show you the dream build converted to official. Yes. And some updates on that one. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Couldn't do without you. Thank you. See ya. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Remember, you can visit us online at waterboxaquariums.com. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching. See you next week.